second season and the nights begin to get cold and frost settles over the land. The sky humidity drops dramatically and clear skies abound. Well, hope springs eternal anyway. Join me, Lead Night Sky Ranger Jeff, also known as Star Dad, as we explore what's up in the sky for October of 2023. Mercury rises in the late morning. It is fast approaching conjunction with the Sun and is becoming too close to the Sun to observe. Venus is now a morning wandering star rising before 4 a.m. at a magnitude of minus 4.7. It's unmistakable in the eastern sky. It reaches greatest western elongation of 46 degrees on the 23rd. Venus will be about 50% lit. We explore the north central area of the moon this month. Look around the 21st for the Apennine mountain range on the southeast shore of the Mare Imbrium. Near the gap between the Mare Imbrium and Mare Serentatis, you will find three distinctive craters, Archimedes, Aristillus, and Autolycus. These young craters show crisp edges indicating they were created probably at the end of the late lunar bombardment era about 3.9 billion years ago. But this may actually be a misnomer as the bombardment seems to have been relatively constant over time and not a sudden increase in impacts. There is a partial solar eclipse on the 14th beginning shortly after noon and ending at 1437 or 237 p.m. Join us at the Blue Slope Country Museum in Franklin to observe this rare phenomenon. Mars is too close to the Sun in conjunction with the Sun. Our asteroid this month is Flora 8 Asteroid. This 85 mile wide spherical moon shines at a magnitude 9.2, significantly dimmer than a nearby 7.4 star. You will find it near NGC 7293, the Helix Nebula. Consult the Minor Ephemeris Center for exact coordinates. The king of all gods, Jupiter, is approaching opposition and is gradually getting larger. It rises at 8 p.m. in the east and will span 49 arc seconds by the end of the month, brightening to a magnitude of minus 2.9, its brightest this year. Take your time and observe the planet in detail. All too often people look through my telescope and, yep, they say they saw the planet, ignoring the fine detail that only comes with detailed examination. Obviously look for the two main belts of hurricanes and see if you can see the great red spot. There are numerous transits of the moons for Jupiter, for example, Io shadow transits on the 5th at 9.50 p.m. Io itself joins the transit at 10.30, the shadow leaves at midnight, and Io itself at 12.41 a.m. Since this is perhaps one of the best months for catching a transit, I will list them all in the calendar of events later on. The ringed planet Saturn rides high in the southern sky at the beginning of the month, setting around 4 a.m. By the end of the month, it will be set by 2 a.m. Saturn is located 9 astronomical units. Remember that an astronomical unit is the average distance from Earth to Sun. The main planet is 18 arc seconds wide, but the rings bring it to a total of 41 arc seconds. The rings will be tilted about 10 degrees from the horizontal. In decent skies, you should be able to see the Cassini division which separates the inner Bravo from the outer Alpha rings. On an exceptional night, you might be able to detect the innermost C ring. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, shines at 8.5 magnitude and lies a fair distance from the planet. Do not mistake it for a star in the background which will be lurking in the area on October 1st. The three tenth magnitude moons, Tethys, Dione, and Rhea, were a bit much closer to Saturn and are usually harder to find and to detect due to Saturn's brightness. All three orbit in the same plane as the rings and can be seen transiting the planet's face. Tethys does this on the 15th, 16th, and again on the 17th. On the 16th, it transits at 1 a.m., taking just 70 minutes. 
Turquoise Uranus rises early in the sky to the east and it approaches opposition next month. Its constant magnitude of 5.7 requires a small telescope or binoculars to spot it. Look to Jupiter's slightly south and east to find it. The sea god, Neptune, is up all night at magnitude 7.7, .7, but its diminutive 2.2 arc second disk makes it a challenge to find, although its distinctive bluish coloration immediately confirms its identity. Neptune passed opposition a month ago, and its disk size will only decrease in size over the remainder of this year. The Orionids return on schedule this year from October 2nd to November 7th, the peak occurring on the 22nd with 20 meteors per hour at its peak in the early morning hours. There will be a quarter moon which should not significantly impact the viewing. The Orionids are caused by leftover debris that was shed by the famous Halley's Comet. Speaking of comets, check out Comet 103P Hartley. You'll need at least a 4-inch telescope. The comet moves swiftly through Auriga, Gemini, and Cancer with a rich background of stars. Consult the Minor Planet Center for exact locations. This will be your last best chance to find the comet for the next few decades. Our constellation of the month is Cetus the Whale. This large constellation will cover most of the lower sky this month from east to west. Contained within it are numerous interesting objects. One of them, the Skull Nebula, NGC 246, is also known as the Soap Bubble Nebula or the Voodoo Mask Nebula. It is an ancient planetary nebula glowing at magnitude 10.9 and you will need dark skies and a 6-inch telescope to bring it out in high magnification. It is almost 4 arc minutes in size. The question of the month is, what's the difference between a double star and a binary star? A binary star is a pair of stars that are gravitationally locked together. That is, they orbit each other and are in relatively close proximity. Typically, we see a giant star, usually a red giant, and a smaller white dwarf star. Double stars only appear to be together because of their alignment. They are typically light years apart in distance. They are not gravitationally linked. Here is your orrery. Here is the calendar of events for the month of October. Join me and Lead Night Sky Ranger Kim as we explore the night sky during this month of October's in the Last Green Valley. There are certainly plenty of objects to see up in the sky this month.